That first thing that we had was a monstrosity. Everyone's always looking for a secret edge, a way of getting ahead. You know, since we've all watched Limitless and since he takes that pill, everybody's been looking for it. Some influencers, Chris Williamson and James Smith, have just brought out the new equivalent of NZT, and that is Newtonic. There we go. So, Newtonic is a new energy type drink, but it's not like Red Bull or Monster where it promises you to be an extreme sports athlete. It's not selling that. Instead, it's selling productivity. It's selling cognitive enhancement and stress reduction through lots of different scientifically kind of proven ingredients. So that's what I want to talk about today is go through all of those different ingredients, but then also talk about, you know, the psychological aspect of having a drink like coffee or an energy drink and just talking about productivity in general. So stick around to learn a little bit more about this drink, but also to look at all aspects of your life and how you could be a little bit more productive. Maybe a little bit like Bradley Cooper in Limitless, but I can't promise that you're gonna look like him or act like him or learn languages in two weeks because that's not gonna happen, is it? <laughs> so I'm Jack, I'm a doctor in the UK and I'm very passionate about looking through scientific literature and trying to work out how we can build healthy habits and happier lives based on the stuff I've read. So if you like the idea of that, then please subscribe. So the first ingredient is called cognizin. And now what is that? So acetylcholine is one of the main communicators within our brains and from our nerves to our muscles as well. So it's a really, really solid communicator within our body, okay? And what cognizin is, is a precursor to that acetylcholine. So basically it's like a ingredient in the recipe for acetylcholine. So the idea is let's give ourselves more of this ingredient so that we can make more acetylcholine. And then that can help us to communicate within our brain better and with, within our nerves to our muscles better. So the implications of that are that we could maybe learn quicker or to form memories better or to communicate with our muscles better for quicker responses, etc. So the evidence is promising, okay? So the gold standard trial is randomized controlled trials. That's what we always look for, for rigorous scientific studies. And the studies on the website are randomized controlled trials. So and they do show benefits within those areas that I've just mentioned. But there's one issue, and that is the sample size within those studies. So the way that we do scientific studies is we take a sample of the population, and then we hope that we've taken a big enough sample of the population that then the effects that we see in that sample, we can generalize to the whole population. And the issue is, if you take a tiny sample, you can't expect that to generalize to every single person within society. So we wanna make sure those sample sizes are big enough so that it generalizes to everybody. Now, the samples just aren't big enough at the moment. So I'd say the studies show promise that this could be beneficial for us, but by no means are nice. So that's one of the bodies in the UK that would give us recommendations within medicine. By no means are they gonna say, oh, every nurse and doctor should have this because it's gonna make the care better because there's just simply not enough evidence. So the next couple of components are Panax ginseng and Rhodiola rosea, and they fall into the category of adaptogens. They are naturally occurring substances that are supposed to reduce our stress. The research again is like in very small sample sizes. So again, you know, it does, does it generalize to everybody? Not convinced. And, but again, you know, there's some promise there. I, I'm not saying that I'm not hopeful for the future, but at the same time, I can't say, you know, take this now and it'll make you less stressed. And the next component is caffeine. So I think we're all convinced about caffeine being effective. So it works through our adenosine system, which makes us tired and it blocks that system, making us more alert. 
Um, but one of the main issues a lot of people have with caffeine is that it makes you anxious and can make you a bit jittery. So the final component is an amino acid called L-theanine that is supposed to be a stress reducer as well, but also has been shown to be complementary to caffeine, helping with the jitteriness and helping with the anxiety that's built up around caffeine. So those are all the components. And I just wanna go into productivity now. The promise of this drink is that it's going to make you more productive. It's gonna reduce your stress and improve your cognitive abilities. So first of all, how do I define productivity? I really like the uh, definition that Alex Hormozzi has that's uh, output per unit of time. And honestly, sometimes my output per unit of time is so bad. So when I define it like that, I'm like, oh God, my productivity is not good at the moment. <laughs> Everybody is always trying to biologically hack the system, to find that magic NZT pill like in Limitless, when actually there are so many practical ways that we can improve our output per unit of time just by optimizing our sleep, by optimizing the different foods that we eat, and by exercising more. Because, you know, you're trying to biologically hack your neurotransmitters by taking these things, but why not just produce them naturally through exercise and make sure that you eat a varied diet that will supply your immune system with the vitamins that it needs and just supply your body with all of the components that it needs. So trying to optimize your diet, your exercise and your sleep will have a huge impact on both your cognitive abilities, but also on, you know, reducing stress. So Definitely before you try and get that extra 0.1% through taking some Panax ginseng, why not look at your life and just see if you've got all of those other aspects in control and optimized as well. So my poison of choice is coffee and I just love the psychological hack of building a ritual around coffee that gets me into the right mind frame. With coffee, I just love the smell of the ground coffee, the sound that the coffee machine makes. I know most people might not like that, but I do. Having that ritual before I then sit down and do some work just gets me in the right mind frame and then I can sit down and be really productive. They're reasonably priced, they're tasty drinks, and you know, there is some scientific backing, but by no means is there enough for me to say that this works. So there is a little bit of evidence there. And I guess what I would say is just to try and optimize all the other aspects of your life, to eat healthy, to sleep well, and they'll have such a bigger impact than any drink could have on your cognitive abilities and on your levels of stress. Through making this video, you know, it's kind of heartbreaking, but I've just realized that, you know, the Limitless pill is probably never going to exist. And it's sad because I want to be like Bradley Cooper in Limitless, but, you know, growing the hair out, it's, it's not working. It's just not happening, is it? <laughs> Instead, I'm just going to have to settle for optimizing my sleep, optimizing my exercise and my nutrition. And with a little bit of supplementation of caffeine, maybe some new tonic, if I feel like having a fizzy drink that day. And yeah, so that's what I've settled for. And I think that's what we might all have to settle for. But... If you've got any other cognitive enhancers or things you'd like me to explore, then please let me know in the comments down below. If you like the idea of building healthy habits through learning about scientific evidence, then please subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Thanks.